I'm James from the Industry Engagement Team in Tafet. Now today I'll be sharing on the topic of responsible retrenchment practices and common issues that we come across. Now we have a couple of uh, good case examples to better illustrate some of the good uh, practices and some of the bad practices. Unfortunately, we do have bad practices. Right. Now, over the past uh, few months, we have received a lot of uh, feedback from employees who were retrenched during this uh, COVID period, especially on how the retrenchment exercise was managed and executed. Now, as we speak to employers who are struggling to survive, now we also realize the impact of COVID on businesses and how this pandemic will have a lasting effect on many companies, even after a year or so. So as uh, businesses adjust themselves to the unsettling economic landscape, managing cost and excess manpower are top of the management's minds to help the business stay afloat for the next few months or maybe into the next year, right? So we'd like to urge employers to take a longer term view and consider government support and other cost saving measures first before you start to cut staff, you know, reduce staff as a quick and short term solution. Now remember, retrenchment is not just a one day affair, right? There's a huge impact on many levels, uh, such as, for example, um, the affected employees and their families. Now what will happen to them financially, emotionally, and their ability to return to the workforce. And then there's also the morale of your existing employees, right? And ultimately, how the company can fully recover from this crisis and thrive in the new normal. Now, um, there are many considerations uh, before and after a retrenchment. For example, um, how do you balance between cost saving measures and retrenchment? How do you find competent people when the upturn returns? Um, when do you start reskilling to avoid the next round of retrenchments? And how do you look after employee well-being during and especially after a retrenchment? So um, there's a lot uh, more to be mindful of. And at the end of the day, our question to you is, ask yourself, right? If retrenchment is indeed the last resort, how can we manage it responsibly and allow employees to live with dignity, right? Live with dignity, remember that. Now, in our engagement with employers and employees on retrenchment exercises, um, we found, a, found out a lot that actually communication is always the biggest cause of complaints other than retrenchment benefits, right? Uh, we noted that most employees are aware of the business situation in the company. Uh, they do understand why the company had uh, to make this decision to retrench. However, what they expect, they expect the company to take a more compassionate and sensitive approach in this retrenchment exercise. Right? Once again, we're talking about compassionate and sensitive approach. So employees must, should have a more thoughtful and thorough planning process to include all these insights. Now, there are two tripartite advisories that you can take guidance from. Uh, the main one, the first one is the tripartite advisory on managing excess manpower and responsible retrenchment. Okay, it's T-A-M-E-M, -E so we'll just call it TAMEM, right? TAMEM for short. Now, the other one is a tripartite advisory on retrenchment benefits which was released on 20th of May this year, with reference to business difficulties due to COVID-19. Uh, for simplicity, we'll just call this the COVID-19 RB advisory. Okay. So for some of you, you may not be too familiar with the TAMEM. So I'll just go through this TAMEM and uh, pick up the main points in the next two slides. So, before thinking about uh, retrenchment, uh, companies advise to look at alternatives to keep your employees, uh, such as like adopting cost saving measures. Now, TAMEM at Annex A, it has a comprehensive uh, list of cost saving measures. And here are the common ones. Uh, first, we have like training, upgrading the employees' skills and employability. And then we have redeployment, Shorter work week, 
wage adjustments and no pay leave. Now, before any cost saving measures are implemented, companies should discuss with employees via phone, video call, or even face to face, right? Before seeking any agreement on emails or on hard copy, right? It is really extremely important to have conversations with employees so that they are fully aware of the situation and the options, and then they can clarify whatever questions they have, right? Now, uh, again, just remember, remember, companies must notify MOM if the cost saving measures have impact on 25% or more of the employee's salary. Now, how to retrench responsibly? Uh, this is for non-unionized uh, companies. Now, if retrenchment is the necessary course of action, now companies can consider six aspects of a responsible retrenchment. Now, first, the selection must be done fairly and objectively without discrimination. Now, also, we want to encourage companies to take a long-term view of manpower needs, including the need to maintain a strong Singapore core of workers. Secondly, now communicate with the affected employees as early as possible before there's public notice of the retrenchment and with as much details as possible. Uh, communication, you must do it sensitively and employees should be treated with empathy. Companies should also try to provide a longer retrenchment notice period beyond what is uh, uh, mentioned in the Employment Act or in the contract so that the employees have more reaction time and can better plan for the next steps. Companies should try to provide uh, retrenchment benefits or RB in line with the advisories, TAMEM, right? Just now I mentioned TAMEM. So we are talking here about two weeks to one month of salary per year of service as per the time end, or in the other advisory it's one to three months of extra payment as per the latest advisory on RP. Uh, next we also encourage companies to assist employees with alternative jobs. Now the easiest way is to actually work with agencies. There are agencies out there that can help you WSG, uh, NTUCs, um, E2I, uh, UPME Centre, yeah, they are all very willing to help you and your employees, right? To look for alternative jobs. Now, most importantly, now be reminded to file the notification with MOM so that also these uh, relevant agencies can be notified and assist in providing the alternative uh, employment opportunities. Now, what happens if you are a unionized company? You just need to consult your union as early as possible, uh, seek advice on the retrenchment quantum, selection of employees and employment facilitation. Now, um, arising from the six areas of responsible retrenchment, uh, we would like to share some common complaints and learning points, right? First of all, uh, we cannot emphasize enough that Retrenchment notification to MOM has to be early so that uh, we can give timely employment assistance to the affected employees. Right? Now, do remember if there's late or non-notification, there could be administrative penalties from MOM. So you really want to avoid that. Right? So um, when do you notify MOM? Like within five working days after affected employees are notified. Right, five working days, but this is applicable to companies with at least 10 employees and where there are five affected employees notified within any six month period. So don't forget, notify MOM. Right, we've also uh, come across cases where the employer was not able to explain clearly to retrench employees as to why they were selected. Now, likely this was because the selection criteria was not objective. Now, the issue with this is that aggrieved employees may complain to MOM or TAFEP for being targeted unfairly in the retrenchment exercise. So our advice to all employers is to ensure that there is an objective selection criteria and there is clear communication to all staff on this. Right. This is similar to another issue on performance appraisal. We'll go on to the next slide, it'll be clearer. Right. So some companies, they do have uh, performance as one of the criteria. And the problem arises is uh, when they actually do not have a robust performance appraisal system in place. 
Now, as you all know, everyone wants to be a nice guy, right? So the supervisor grades everyone is okay, can do, satisfactory performance. So what happens? The employees really do not receive a true constructive uh, feedback on how they are doing in their work and where they need to improve on. So as a result, when they are retrenched, the employees direct their focus on other possible reasons for their retrenchment, such as discrimination or bias towards them based on their age, race or gender. Right? So the learning point here is that all companies, you really need to have a proper performance management system and to provide regular feedback to employees. Now, even so, with or without retrenchment, uh, this system should already be in place, right? Everyone knows that, right? Uh, all employees need to be informed regularly, constantly of how they are doing in their work and where are the areas they need to uh, improve on. Now, another complaint um, from employees is that they receive the news of their retrenchment at late notice and they are caught off guard. Now, leaving them in shock you know, as they're asked to pack their belongings and go uh, exit through that door, that's it. Now, we really want to encourage companies to communicate as early as possible, right? Even before the issuance of the letter, the, the retrenchment letter, and to adopt a longer retrenchment notice period. Now, preferably also on the employee's last day, now ensure that all um, uh, the salaries and retrenchment benefits are paid to them. Now, communications to employees. On communications, um, one typical complaint is uh, the phrasing of the retrenchment letter. Now, some companies uh, word it as a letter of termination. Now, this word termination hints on poor performance, right? So, you get employees who are very upset you know, that there's this mention of this word termination, termination of employment services, you know, as they're afraid that it's going to impact on them negatively on their next employment search. So our advice to companies is to accurately reflect retrenchment in the letter, right, with well-explained reasons, right? If, remember, if the job role has become redundant, it is a retrenchment, right? Call it a retrenchment in the letter, it is a retrenchment, right? So this avoids unnecessary grievance from the employee. Now, lack of employment assistance. Uh, when we speak to employees, we realize that many times companies do not seem to be providing them with alternative employment assistance, right? They're just given the letter and that's it, out the door. But please do contact WSG and E2I to help connect these agencies with your employees. Your employees would really appreciate that, seriously. Now, these agencies are very willing to provide support in job coaching, counseling, and placement, etc. Right. So, also, it would be uh, very helpful if the HR could prepare uh, all the relevant documents, such as testimonials, to support them in their search for their next job, uh, instead of you know, waiting for the employees to come back to the company, make a phone call to the company, and come back another day to request for them. So give them all this, right? On when you're, you're retrenching employees on the last day, make sure everything is prepared for them. Right, another issue is uh, on uh, retrenchment benefits where some companies do not provide due to uh, reasons such as uh, financial difficulties. Now, well, uh, some companies do pay uh, RB. Uh, they do not uh, ensure that there's parity across different batches of employees or different branches or outlets. And this is an issue with employees. We've seen uh, companies giving different amounts of RB for different batches, right? And it's going to lead to a lot of more, a lot of issues with your employees, right? So our advice is for companies to be consistent with your RB quantum and be aligned with the advisories I mentioned, the TAMEM or the COVID-19 RB advisory. So if you are not able to provide RB according to TAMEM, please do explain to the employees and seek their understanding, right? Just go a little bit small, a little bit more and then just explain to them. They would understand, I'm sure. Now, okay, now uh, that's, uh, now we come to a stage whereby I'll show you some examples whereby uh, companies have had some gaps in retrenchment practices and there will be three examples and finally a fourth example of a good example of a company with good practices. Now first case is a company in the financial 
industry. Now, the retrenched employee was a group audit partner who served the company for about 12 years and was uh, retrenched as the company was going through its restructuring and consolidation. Now, so his audit role, uh, being a regional role, was moved to regional HQ as a measure of cost prudence. Now, the company offered him a transfer to the regional HQ, but he was not able to accept it. Now, in his uh, feedback to Tafet, he said that the company could have done more to find him other roles instead of just retrenching him. But actually, unknown to him, the company was actually doing something. You know, they were actually trying their best to redeploy him. But he didn't know that. So the company initially did not provide RB, uh, but the employee requested for it uh, with the company and received 1.5 weeks per year of service, which is um, actually below the time end, right? Uh, but the company justified to him that it's just part of the cost prudence and all that. So this person came to Tafab and what happened was that Tafab engaged the employer and found that the company could have been more transparent with the employee on the plans the effort taken that they had made to try to redeploy him, right? So misunderstandings could have been avoided, right? Now we advised the company that the comms could have been done better with more empathy. Now instead of just treating it as a procedural exercise, right? Empathy is the word. Now company cited cost prudence as a reason for retrenchment and why it was not able to pay RB as per the TAMEM, but however, when our officer reviewed the company's financial situation, now it was found that the company actually could afford, they could afford to pay as per time and uh, two weeks of, uh, per years of service. Right? So as a result, uh, TAFEP advised the company to follow time and closely and pay the shortfall in the RB. And so the final amount was increased from 1.5 weeks to two weeks per year of service. Now company also acknowledged that um, the feedback on communications uh, and assure that they would uh, improve on this area. So this case reminds us that we really need to be mindful uh, that there has to be uh, transparency and communications as we plan for the retrenchment exercise. Now I have a second example here of a company in the retail industry. Uh, well, I'd like to play a little game here, invite you to guess if this is a termination or a retrenchment case, right? Make a guess. Now, this assistant store manager worked in the company for 10 years and was terminated with a salary in lieu of notice uh, because his job scope had been expanded and the company deemed that he was incompetent and unsuitable for this new expanded job scope. Now, the expanded job scope uh, included you know, sales management and supervision of the managers, but they deemed that he was not suitable. Now, this employee requested to try out this new expanded role, but unfortunately, he was rejected. Now, he was also not given the opportunity to be trained for this new role. Now, instead, the role was actually given to another colleague who was deemed to be more competent than him. Now, the original job scope had changed. The employee was not able to continue with the same position. Now, hence, is this a termination? No, it was a retrenchment instead of termination, right? So the company could have also looked into other areas to fit him in instead of just letting him go. Now, the company could have provided training to help the employee pick up skills and build new capabilities for the new job. Uh, they could have planned and offered guidance and assurance to help the employee to welcome the changes and transit into the new role. Alternatively, the company could have also redeployed this employee to uh, other suitable positions, right? So um, as we assess this to be a retrenchment, we uh, asked the company then to provide uh, retrenchment benefits as per the term and, and to help the employee uh, with employment assistance. Now the company already had financial constraints and they could only offer one week. Uh, this is much lower than term end, but ultimately the employee uh, accepted it. Uh, company also retracted their letter of termination and we issued another letter stating clearly the reasons for the retrenchment. Uh, company also followed up with employment assistance, encouraged the employee to apply for other jobs within the group. Uh, the employee was also given uh, contacts of job placement agencies and issued with an employment reference uh, letter. Now this uh, 
example uh, helps to explain the difference between termination and retrenchment and if retrenchment could have been avoided in the first place. Now that case is a, a company in the retail business. Now the company had conducted a retrenchment at two major uh, locations. Uh, many of the affected employees were long serving staff that had worked for like 10, 20, 30 years. Unfortunately, many aspects of the retrenchment exercise was not managed properly. Now, for instance, the company did not send in notification of, of the retrenchment to MOM on time, and hence there was no employment assistance provided. Now, also, the company paid an RB quantum that was below TAMM, and there was a disparity between two different groups of employees, or you had different payouts, different amounts of payouts. The company lacked proper communication and the affected employees were notified on the spot that they had been retrenched, had very little time to react and many had to just pack their belongings and leave immediately, right? So the fact that the employees were taken by surprise on the news of retrenchment meant that they really had no idea that the business challenges were there or, or the company's intention to retrench. So it seems uh, like this company really did not show empathy during the retrenchment and this was made even worse because you know why some employees were even escorted by security guards when leaving the company you know can you imagine a security guard escorting you out to the main doors now our advice here is to really ensure that you give priority to communication in the retrenchment exercise that it is done early and properly so that employees can prepare themselves mentally and explore alternative career plans. Now, the company should also communicate to the employees on how they can help in employment assistance. Uh, retrenchment benefit was uh, also lower than Tama in this case, and uh, there was disparity across the two different groups of employees. So our advice is uh, for the company to engage uh, MOM as early as possible to discuss the process and compensation. And don't forget to file a uh, retrenchment notification to MOM as early as possible. Now, fortunately, this company took our advice quickly, provided support such as outplacement services, reskilling and counselling for the affected employees. Uh, they also eventually uh, increased the retrenchment benefits to one month per year of service, which is good huh? in line with TAMM guidelines. So this is a good reminder for us to be careful and compassionate when it comes to retrenchment exercise. Um, now, we'd like to share a company which has done a retrenchment exercise responsibly and sensitively. This is a very good example. Now, this case is about an employer in the technology business. Uh, unfortunately, they had to conduct a retrenchment exercise. They tried everything they could, but ultimately couldn't help to save all the jobs. But in our opinion, uh, they actually conducted the retrenchment exercises uh, responsibly and sensitively to support the affected employees as much as they could. Now, in the CEO's memo to employees right he explained clearly the reasons for the restructuring and consolidation and he shared the other measures taken to keep the business operational during the COVID. Uh, he acknowledged the impact of this announcement on their lives and he even apologized to the uh, staff. Now, in, in addition the company went beyond TAMM in terms of compensation and the employment assistance. Uh, as a result, the, the employees were really appreciative of the retrenchment package and transition support provided. Now, let's take a look, quick look huh, at what the company has provided. Uh, for retrenchment benefit, the company provided two weeks for every six months of service. Now, this comes out to one month per year of service. Employees with at least six months will get this compensation. And then there was also the ex gratia of 1.5 months provided. Uh, right. and the employees were able to continue with their medical insurance coverage till the end of the year and expecting parents were able to encash their maternity and paternity leave. Employment assistance also applicable for an additional three months after the last date of employment and employees get to keep their laptops to help them in the job search or preparation of resume. So this company uh, put in a lot of effort in uh, employment facilitation also. Uh, employees can opt, up, opt in, sorry, in the company's uh, internal directory and transition body system. They had helpful links there, videos and interview preparation. Now, the company also had an internal acquisition team that supports uh, employees' job search. They provided one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions also. Uh, and then employees could even uh, upgrade their knowledge and skills through the LinkedIn platform. Now, this is really how a uh, good 
uh, company, uh, good retrenchment exercise is supposed to be conducted responsibly and sensitively. So companies definitely can put in some effort and treat employees with dignity, support, and respect. Now I come to the end of my presentation. I thank you for your attention. And now